Hey everyone, got another video for you today. It wasn't the topic I was planning on. We're, we're back on science again because it seems that everyone in the Darwin community wants to drop a great big turd um, just misrepresenting or lying about science. Now, today we're doing this guy, Smile to Janna. I don't want to hell this guy's real name is, but yeah, his channel's called Smile to Janna. He produces absolute garbage videos. They're always cut together really dodgily there's loads of edits in there to show that any difficult parts of conversation have been cut out and um his arguments are garbage it's just a series of sound bites so i don't i wouldn't normally attack this video but he's <laughs> he's produced this thing where uh, it is kind of a typical darwin tactic where on the one hand he's going to attack science and try to make it seem as if it's completely untrustworthy and unreliable um which is what the, the, the atheist he's talking to, that's his claim. You know, science is the most reliable path to working out whether something is true or not. And so he's going to throw shade on it in, on, on the one hand. And then on the other hand, he's going to claim that uh, Muslims and Islam is responsible for all modern science, essentially. And the West is just kind of piggybacking off it or, the, you know, the entire rest of the world. So it's kind of a schizophrenic um, almost contradictory claim that he's going for and I've, I've seen this done so many times I mean even on subjects like evolution you'll get Muslims who will say I don't believe in evolution, evolution but oh by the way do you know it was a Muslim that came out of it which is a complete lie but anyways so I digress and that, <laughs> that's basically the nature of this schizophrenic video so we're going to go through and debunk all this crap and uh, I hope you enjoy it we just we just put that on ice for a second replication crisis are you aware of it Go on. Science, when you repeat an experiment. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So when you repeat an experiment enough times, there was something that was, there was an experiment done by Amgen that noticed that I think it was around 40 or 50% of studies that when they were replicated, they didn't give the same conclusions. That's number one. Yeah, right. Okay. The replication crisis is a real thing, but it's most acute in medicine, which is the company that he was... Um, quoting i don't know if this he actually got the details right probably not but the uh the company that he was quoting is a uh, biotech company so there is this issue um within medicine it's also true in social sciences things like psychology and everything else like that so replication crisis is a real thing but it doesn't affect the harder sciences as much i mean it does to a certain degree um so when you're talking about a, a, a path to truth and particularly the kinds of things where a Muslim is going to object, things like evolution, um, these other areas of science, it, it, it's it's not really so much of a uh, so much of an issue. So this replication crisis, it's not a reason to distrust the scientific method. I mean, you could argue that it means that we need to, uh, you know, science needs to be doing a better job, the individual scientists, in terms of actually making sure that their experiments are repeatable. But there's nothing wrong with the actual scientific method. So this is just a nonsense claim. Science falls prey to replication crisis. Number two was in... Wait, let me finish the points here. Number two was induction. Yeah, now induction is something that if you studied philosophy, you studied science, induction is something that's standard to you. But you, you dismiss that, no problem. You can check that later. Number three, interpretation of data. Number two didn't mean anything. We can come yeah he's absolutely right it doesn't mean and, and so i cut it off slightly early he's basically saying we can come back to that this like everything with this guy is just a script and he expects to throw it out saying oh yeah if you study this is a real problem right this guy has not studied science or philosophy and when you're looking at induction this goes back to basically the problem that david hume um raised which is this idea that you can't really assume the uniformity of nature and therefore any um um, any assumption that you're going to make about data you've got now about something what's the line of reasoning which means that you can use it to predict something else in the future because in the future maybe um, conditions going to change you can't assume that everything's going to work out just because it did this time so as an, as an example it'd be like saying uh, you know I, I ate an apple which was really tasty today and you know I got some nutrients from it so if I, I you know, does that mean that the next apple I eat tomorrow is going to be the same? So that's that's the kind of thing it's talking about. So basically, it sets up this problem where you can't automatically assume um, something in the future based on past data that you've got. Now, 
this is more of a philosophical problem, which is why you get a lot of these Darwin clowns kind of bring this up. Uh, they all love to pretend that they know philosophy. Now, I don't. I really am garbage on philosophy. My knowledge is really poor, but you don't have to go and look up this stuff to realise it's not actually that much of a problem. Now, yes, uh, from a philosophical point of view, this can be argued. And apparently there's been all sorts of argument about Hume. Some people have rejected this claim, some haven't. But even David Hume himself basically said that this doesn't, it's not necessarily really a problem in terms of science producing reliable and accurate information that you're not going to get good results from science okay again this is more like a larger kind of um i wouldn't say metaphysical but yeah it's a larger philosophical issue so it doesn't actually mean that science isn't a good reliable indicator of truth it means that the line of reasoning that you get there you can't just do it based on induction now the point is, is that the scientific method has got all sorts of ways to compensate for that. I mean, this is why you have experimentation. So you're not just assuming you're actually going to test it out. This is why you have full survivability and all the other parts with, uh, of, of the scientific method, which makes it reliable. And also some people have argued against it. I think Karl Popper and other people said that this isn't really a problem. I haven't even looked into that side of it. But the point is, this is not a problem for science in the way that he's trying to make it out. This is more just a a philosophical kind of intellectual discourse it doesn't mean that science is not a reliable path to finding out if something is likely true or not and pretty much even david hume said that so let's carry on come back to that no problem let me just get the four things out the way yeah so one was replication crisis one was interpretation uh induction the the third one is interpretation of data See, look at that little look to the sky he does. He's just reading off a script. I mean, this guy doesn't know anything about any of this stuff, really. He's not looked into it. It's all just copy and paste, typical Darwin apologetics. And he's on a script. Again, a study was done in which they had certain scientists, they were given... I mean, listen to that description. A study was done and they had certain scientists. I mean, could that be more vague? The same data. And both groups of scientists came to different conclusions. Why? One was doing it on Bayesian probability. The other one was doing it on Bayesian. correlation yeah, to, the, to the line of best fit. So again, interpretation. Yeah, OK. So there are different methods of um, calculating statistics on a probabilistic basis. OK, so you've got Bayesian theorem and you've got other um, probabilistic frameworks that you can use. So yes, obviously if you've got a piece of data which two people are using two different um, methods on, then yeah, okay. So how do you fix that? You make sure that everybody's using the same methodology. I mean, again, this is not like, a, he's acting as if this is some major issue. Um, it's not, I mean, again, there's nothing wrong with the actual scientific method all it is, is is where human error has crept in. And obviously you expose this by human beings looking at it in that self-correcting way that science does. So again, this is just more nonsense. Patient of that data is very important as well. And number four, like we discussed with Newtonian physics and with Einsteinian physics, Thomas Kuhn says there's something known as paradigm shifts. Each generation or so, science goes through a paradigm shift. So because of these four, Again, a paradigm shift is not particularly a problem. I mean, to break it down, essentially it's saying that you've got this idea of either science gradually in, um, increases in the knowledge base, you make little improvements here and there, or you can get these major jumps where suddenly an entire kind of um, set of common assumptions um, fall apart. Um, a good example would be classical physics. Um, it was assumed that pretty much the physical world had been worked out under classical physics until certain observations about light etc showed that this can't be the case and therefore it birthed quantum physics now that'd be a major paradigm shift and it's um it, it sort of tore up the rule book of, of just using newtonian physics now again all the, all the, <laughs> i mean thomas kuhn himself rode back from probably what this guy thinks well I, I doubt this guy really understands what he's talking about but there's this idea that because of a paradigm shift that um you're uh, everyone basically can have their own interpretation 
and you can't really sort of come to truth with, with, with it because you get these paradigm shifts and one paradigm is um, not necessarily going to be um, uh, uh, more true or less true than, than the previous paradigm. But that goes against what Thomas Kuhn himself said. He said each new paradigm shift is going to produce better scientific results. So again, this is not the problem that this guy is trying to make out, and that's because he doesn't really understand what the hell he's talking about. So all four of these things, which he thinks somehow undermine science, are fucking bullshit. Four things. I would argue that science itself is not a strong enough criteria for you to defend and for you to say that's the best thing. Yeah, you would say that because you're ignorant and you want to inject Allah into this, but obviously that's nonsense. Even testimony. Science relies on testimony, but according to the scientific method, you cannot prove testimony. Well, again, see, he's doing something really shifty here. He's saying science relies on testimony. On testimony. So he, he, he's trying to put in your mind the idea that when he's talking about testimony in science, what he's saying is that, yes, you have to rely on the fact that other scientists have worked out um, basic theories, uh, ba have worked out basic knowledge in previous generations, which you're now using now. And you haven't necessarily gone through and done every experiment to prove every single thing. He's trying to equate that to the kind of testimony that religion uses, which is essentially a game of he said, she said, and I saw a miracle and, and wrote it down in his book. And the moon was split and Muhammad flew to uh, heaven on a flying mutant donkey. He's trying to equate those as the same by using the word testimony. When they're obviously not, because the point about science is anything that's been worked out, you could, if you want to, go back and test everything. You could go back and replicate all the experiments, say, that Newton did to work out the laws of motion. That's a possibility. You can't go back and get any definitive proof that the fucking moon was split. So, again, it's a sneaky way of doing it. But he's, again, this, this constant undermining of science to basically get you to the position where you're going to say, oh, well, religion is just as reliable as science then. So what's wrong with me picking one over the other? So, yeah, it's really dishonest. So these are the four points. The floor is yours. One, two, three, four, five cameras pointing at us. They all rely absolutely on science. Not one of them works on prayer or the belief in the existence of God. The floor is yours. OK. So that's a pretty good comeback. He says later in the video that um, the conversation starts out as a um, um, him asking about prayer. So obviously, I would assume it'd be something like the efficacy of prayer. But obviously, he doesn't show you this part of the conversation because he loves chopping it up just for a little sound bite. So, um, but the, the atheist guy asks a good question. Yeah, you've got a bunch of uh, cameras here. They're produced based on science. Nothing to do with prayer. Nothing to do with God. So let's see how he answers this. The creator of the camera was Ibn al-Haytham. Ibn al-Haytham was somebody... That's a lie. Now, I mean, this is a completely pointless distraction, um, but what, what he's doing here, to dodge away from the good point the atheist has made, he's essentially going to go on this long diatribe about how everything in science was invented by Muslims and therefore Islam is needed for science, which is just completely ridiculous. Now, Ibn al-Haytham, whatever the hell his name is, Again, he didn't invent the camera, okay? The camera obscura, it's mentioned 500 BC in China by this um, guy called Mosey. So he's lied straight up there. And this comes from, all, all of these claims he's going to make, they all come from this thing, 1001 Inventions. And just to let everyone know, anyone who's not sure, uh, doesn't remember this, about 12 years ago, I think it was, this piece of propaganda came out, 1001 Inventions, which was a whole series of lies about um, what apparently the golden age of Islam had produced in terms of inventions. And they were trying to take credit for everything, like the camera, like aeroplanes. You know, probably the internet was in there as well. Um, and it was it, it's all been debunked. I mean, this stuff was debunked like 10, 12 years ago. Yet he's reading off every bit. It's just the same script. So it just shows they don't even update. Even when they get debunked, they lay low for a while and just pump out the same propaganda and you'll get 40 50 thousand of his um followers will just eat this shit up as if this wasn't debunked a decade or more ago anyway let's carry on that was devout muslim 
In fact, the scientific method came from Ibn al-Haytham. In fact, the see, that's an even bigger lie. So, <laughs> it's amazing. He spends the first part of the video dunking on science, saying, you know, the scientific method is just trash, you know, because there's there's all these problems that makes it completely unreliable. Then tries to claim that Ibn al-Haytham um, invented the scientific method, which is absolute bullshit. Again, th th there's no one inventor of the scientific method. It was a long process of development, going back to the ancient Greeks and the um, and parts of it back to ancient India and Egypt and and anyone who was doing kind of proto science added little bits to it. So obviously the Greeks added kind of the idea of uh, observation um, rather than just saying, oh, God did it, you know, to look at observation. And then the likes of um, Muslims in the Middle Ages, and particularly this guy, um, Ibn al-Latham, whatever <laughs> you pronounce his name, um, it looks like he did a, a certain limited amount of um, experimentation to go along with the observations. Obviously, that's a key part of the scientific method. But there's been plenty of other bits that have been added since. That wasn't the finished idea of the scientific method. Obviously, you had Newton and um, others of his ilk of the year in the 17th century on into 18th century that did um, add, add things to, do, to it. So you add the idea of um, uh, repeatability of experimentation and you add the idea of falsifiability and so all these things come together to use to create what we now have as the modern scientific method so to say any one person created the scientific method is nothing it's just it, it's inaccurate in the first place you really shouldn't pinpoint one person um, and the thing is if you look up Ibn al Latham um, in reliable so you know things like um, encyclopedias or biographies nobody ever uses this term about them. this has become a propaganda term that yes people who dodgily edited wikipedia pages and kind of dodgy articles written by muslims and also what you know um, darwin muslims and 1001 inventions all these type of people use um this term as kind of like a propaganda tool again but there's no reality to it so it's just another lie he's saying it the muslims at that time could he Wait, have you, been, asked, you could, said the floor's yeah, mine. It, it, but could he have been a Christian? He wasn't a Christian. But could he have been? But he wasn't. No, that's not the question. Yeah. Could he? It, so he was born with a, a sufficiently intelligent and interested mind. Yeah. Let's say he was born to my mum and dad. Yeah, I mean, in a roundabout way, the atheist is asking the question because, I mean, he's essentially bringing up the idea of like, what does it matter what his religion was? Because it's certainly not his religion he would have drawn upon to do the kind of work he'd done. Now, the Muslim that he's citing, I mean, he did seem to be a really bright guy. He did important work in terms of optics, and I think he did some mathematics, as, um, uh, astronomy and stuff like that. And it, there were many people at the uh, height of the uh, Muslim empire sort of running from the 9th through to the 13th century. They did some really good um, scientific work. It's nothing to do with their religion. It was to do with the fact whether they could get a rich patron, you know, a caliph or somebody like that who wasn't completely opposed to science, that actually had a curiosity about the world, would fund these guys. And if they were curious and smart, they would go ahead and do it. Nothing to do with Islam. It's their own curiosity about the world. It's their own engagement and their own intelligence, um, which, as the atheist is pointing out, anyone can do. They've got those faculties and they've got the... Um, material resources to do it it wouldn't matter whether they were born to atheist parents christian parents jewish parents hindu parents muslim parents as long as they had the encouragement and the backing to do it and the skills they would do it so again he's, it's a good question but see how the guy answers it yeah and he was born a christian i have no issue with that so if newton born, was a christian could, but kepler was a christian galileo yeah, was a christian but if you'd have been born yeah, exactly. So it's under, so. What point were you trying to make by you know bringing up the the, the fact that yes, there were some good Muslim scientists in, in you know the eleventh century? Christian, does it matter that it was a Muslim? I mean, what the fuck does any of this have to do with the guys in the question about the cameras and what made the cameras? Was it science or was it belief in God and prayer? No, your pre your premise was no, prayer. Exactly. Your premise was prayer. So they're still praying to the same God. No, they mentioned prayer. You said. Do they run on prayer? Oh, yeah, sorry, yes, yes, I, I, I think I like that, yes. Yeah. yeah, exactly, and, you know, how about answering the question?
Yeah. Do, do, but, but do they? That's what I was talking about. Or prayer. Do, they, do they run electricity? Well, that's the point that I, that I tried to answer when you said close by. Sorry. <laughs> I said the father of modern day optics is Ibn al Haytham. The father. Well, again, saying the father of modern day optics, again, I haven't looked into this enough because I don't think it's as an important uh, claim, but I imagine that label is probably misused as well. Father of modern day scientific method is, is again, Ibn al Haytham. Ibn yeah, when as already discussed, that's certainly a stupid lie. Ibn al Haytham was a Muslim. Yeah, you've got Al Khawarizmi, who's the father of modern day algebra. Yeah, see, that's another lie as well. I mean, it, 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 in a similar way to the scientific method and most of these things, um, there was there was a process. I mean, certainly the Muslims of the era did a lot of good work on mathematics and algebra. But, you, for example, again, you only have to look this up. Um, you just just go Google this stuff. Look for any encyclopedia stuff. You'll find the Afante of Alexandria, which was about 800 years beforehand in Egypt, who did important work um formulated a basis for algebra so you could even easily say that this guy is the father of algebra this is just stupid propaganda words to try and claim that islam is somehow um, the the creator of all maths and science when it isn't you have mm, Your maths you've got I'll, I'll give you that all day long no no all of these no you shouldn't give him that all day long um because as i say i mean yes they made a contribution to it um but that's it they didn't invent it like yeah, Ibn, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Ibn no, al-Haytham, no yeah, yeah, al-Khawarizmi, yeah. Jabir ibn Hayyan, yeah, uh, Zahrawi. The father of alchemy, <laughs> sorry, the father of modern day alchemy. Modern day alchemy would be chemistry, okay, because alchemy was essentially a fucking dead end. So to say you're the father of alchemy is a bit like saying, uh, you know, you're the father of phrenology. Um, you know, it's, it's a dis discredited scientific pursuit okay now again there were um, muslim scientists who still made good good contributions that you could say you know helped future chemistry but that's true of the ancient greeks as well you know you had these proto kind of chemistry stuff that was done a thousand or 1500 years before any muslims um were looking into this so again you know far from alchemy it's, it's that's a big claim I mean, it's, this guy's so fucking stupid 200 surgical instruments i would say hundreds of years ago uh, just so and again what has this got to do with the damn question it wouldn't matter if every scientist on earth was a muslim it's not going to change the question that he asked what is it that creates the damn camera that's filming them is it the science or is it their religion oh, yeah. yeah in fact even here in the uk until about the 16th 17th the official medical textbook was was by ibn sina Again, this go and Google, right? Anyone who wants to, right? Go and Google Ibn Sina's canon book, um, a medical reference in Europe for 500 years. If you just type that on Google, that the first thing that you'll come up with is 1001 inventions. Okay. He's just taking it word for word from that piece of propaganda that was debunked fucking 12 years ago. Now, the thing is, this thing is actually true, but it's kind of irrelevant. I mean, Ibn Sina was a collator of a certain amount of medicine and um, a lot of the um, stuff that the Greeks had worked out. And um, it was also a lot of pseudoscience and a lot of spiritual stuff, you know, talking about the soul and things like that. And um, yeah, he, he was cited in medieval Europe for 500 years up until they actually had better science, which pretty much overruled most of it. So, you know, I think you know, the Greeks, which was was the basis of this canon of medical knowledge had all sorts of wrong ideas about the world miasma theory so yeah as soon as you got into the 17th 18th 19th century this stuff was discarded as we actually had real science like evolution and germ theory of disease which between the two of them helps formulate modern um medicine and biology so um you know to to, to quote this as if this is somehow impressive that yeah okay so there was a Muslim guy whose part of his canon was cited in Europe as a textbook, which fundamentally most of it was wrong. So, you know, what is he doing? What what's he trying to get from this? I don't know. Thomas Jefferson had his own Quran. He was studying Arabic to learn. So what? I mean, who, who the fuck is this? Is he just going to mention that anyone who's ever 
owned a Quran now is somehow making his point? I mean, what point are you trying to make here? I mean, I own a Quran. I mean, does this somehow help your, your bloody, whatever point you're trying to make? I mean, this is such garbage. You can actually go home and check all this. Like you said, there's five cameras here. I'm saying this stuff, you can reference it later, no problem. I've got a copy of the Quran. Yeah. Yeah, but I am referencing it later. It turns out that you're either lying and distorting or just finding stuff that's completely irrelevant. So, yeah, I mean, luckily for you, your audience isn't going to do that. Most of the Muslims that are watching your video are just going to go, oh, mashallah, oh, this is amazing, and write stupid comments about how you own the atheist. Um, they won't check the fact that you're lying about everything. Yeah. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, brilliant. So the point that I'm trying to say, Ian, is... Uh, what you asked me initially was, do you pray before crossing the road? And my thing was, I do both. And what do you mean you do both? As in, you, 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 you pray and cross the road at the same time? Or you pray and do the rational thing, like look both ways and make sure a car isn't coming? Um, I mean, this is quite bizarre. And again, it would be helpful if they didn't cut his video to, to, to shit, um, to make these little memeable videos. Um, we would actually have the context of the conversation if you just put it all up, but you won't do that because you, you'll look like an idiot. But okay, so he asked you about prayer. Um, I mean, if you really pray before you cross the road, then yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty stupid. I would say the same thing here, both. Do your best, Allah will do the rest. That's one of the philosophies of Islam. Wow, what a load of trite garbage. <laughs> Oh, you have oh, to do, oh, do, yeah. you, do your best and I'll do the rest. Yeah, you have to do. Yeah, it's a bit of a shame the atheist is um, <laughs> he's letting the side down a little bit here. I mean, he's asked some fairly good questions um, so far, but um, yeah, he's been maybe worn down by the st stupidity of this and is why you'd be impressed by that stupid little saying. I don't know. Do something, Ian. And I think that's, I think that's why, oh. because there are certain people of faith that, like you said, Mahatma Gandhi said that with regards to his wife as well, when she fell ill, he said, I'm not going to give antibiotics because that's not the way. And then when she passed away, then afterwards he ended up using antibiotics when it came to his time. So this is actually that we would actually say that's not practicing Islam properly. Well, he's a Hindu, so yeah, of course. As a Muslim, as a person that believes in Allah and the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you have to do something. This is a world of means. And yeah, well, yeah, well, but what do you do though? I mean, certainly not much science in the last 700 years from the Islamic part of the world. So, this emphasis on prayer being really important does seem to have taken its toll. Then, reliance. So, you marry both of them together because this is a world of means, it's not paradise. So, the point that I'm trying to say, yeah, again, like name, name any invention, name any technology development that needed Allah's involvement. With, when, with regards to these cameras, I would say it's both. It's both, you need Islam. For example... I you need Islam to invent a camera and build it. <laughs> I mean, you cannot be serious. I mean, again, this guy puts stuff up, these stupid videos, and he's got something that ridiculous in it. You need Islam, even though modern cameras were invented by non-Muslims and I don't think they were praying to any god when they did it. Um, you need Islam for that camera. I would say that we are of two main things. We are of the physical and we are of the spiritual. Well, it depends what you mean by spiritual. I mean, that's kind of a vague term, but um, yeah, I mean, if it's all about a soul, uh, you need to demonstrate that. No one's ever done it. And if one is deprived and the other one is, you know, satiated, it's a problem. Yeah, it's a problem. If you focus too much on the spiritual side and you neglect the physical side, you're going to die. If you rely too much on the physical side and you neglect the spiritual side, then spiritually you're going to die. Yeah, there's going to be chaos. There's going to be, you know, issues because that person is morally bankrupt or I, I, whatever. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not agreeing yeah. with you, but I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah, well, you should be disagreeing. And, you know, there's, there's a great experiment we can do, right? Let's find somebody who can build a camera and then let's find somebody else who can stand next to them and say prayers, okay? And then we'll see which one of them has a camera at the end of that experiment. I can guarantee it's not going to be the one who's praying. Yeah, that's that's fine. <laughs> I'll take that still. So, it, so in terms...
Yeah, you'll take that still because um, this is all just desperate mumbo jumbo gibberish bullshit, and you know you're not even near making any kind of coherent point. Because of that, Ian, what I'm saying is again, don't put us in the same camp as the Christians. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, and I'm not as well. I wouldn't want to insult the Christians, quite frankly, because I mean, as much as <laughs> as much as Christians, uh, no, I don't believe any of their um, um, spiritual um, claims, religious claims. Um, those Christians that uh, do respect science, um, they'll separate the two. They wouldn't. They wouldn't try to put prayer involved in any of their scientific work or any of their technology work because they know these are separate fields, even if you believe in God. And I mean, to be fair, any Muslim worth their salt who is doing science, and obviously there are plenty of them doing that, are going to have to be of the same thing. They're going to they're going to have to make that disconnect. You won't find a single Muslim, I doubt. Who's, who's doing any kind of credible science work that's going to say, yeah, you need some prayer while you're doing it. I mean, this is just, it's just it's fucking idiotic. Yeah. Not in any way no, no, I'm, I'm not assuming you are. What I'm saying is maybe it's to the audience that sometimes what they do is they assume that, oh, we, we, we pray before doing anything. It has to be a physical prayer. No, Ian, it doesn't have to be a physical prayer. It could yeah, I mean, again, this is not really anything to do with the topic. I mean, the start of this video was essentially this guy saying science is the best way to get to truth. Uh, it's the most reliable path. And nothing you have said um, has argued against that point. It could be awareness. It could be intention. In fact, it is awareness. It is intention. These brothers are standing here, mashallah, patiently, you know, listening. Their intention is seeking knowledge. I, I love language, mashallah. Yeah. Mashallah means, uh, you know, Allah willed it. Allah willed it. I, yeah. I, I, I do like language. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What a load of crap. Um, <laughs> you know, we didn't get near, didn't get near actually addressing the issue. Once he'd gone through this, like, four-point bullshit program of let's uh, denigrate science with a bunch of lies um he, he didn't actually address the, the the issue which is okay and even if everything you said about was uh, um science was true have you actually provided a better method for establishing what's true i mean all you did was claim that you need prayer to build a camera so i mean th this is absolute garbage and yet i mean at the time making this um this video he's already got something like 40 or thousand views on this and Goodness knows how many thumbs up and stuff like this. So, yet again, we've got a third example in a row here now of the ignorance that is being willingly and purposely spread by these Darwa fuckheads. And it's it's just really disheartening. And this guy in particular is, you know, he's using all this debunked 1001 invention stuff that was destroyed 10, 12 years ago, just recycling it for a new audience. I mean, this this is why they're so dishonest and why they just they they still need to be countered because they're just spreading this ignorance around and just making the world bit by bit more dumb more bigoted um more like him so yeah anyways uh, i hope you all enjoyed the video i'll um i'll be doing a, a new topic um over the weekend so um if you haven't subscribed already please do and i'll see you in the next video